Ah, the rudder. It's one of an airplane's main flight controls, and one of its most underused. Some pilots tend to use it only when turning the airplane, and then they take the rudder, tuck it back into their pocket, and forget about it. So why do we neglect these important controls down at our feet? Well, we'll give you a hint. It all comes down to recognizing yaw. Believe it or not, in cruise flight, many pilots have difficulty keeping a straight track across the ground. As I said earlier, it all has to do with this. And what is yaw? Well, it's the movement about the vertical axis of the Wait, is this guy really going to talk about yaw? I'm an experienced pilot, darn it. We learned this on day one of flight training. All right, just bear with me for a second. Yaw is a very simple concept, and every pilot knows how to create yaw by pushing the rudder pedals left or right. But what happens when the airplane yaws and you didn't create it, at least not deliberately? Do you recognize it when it happens? For example, a pilot is flying through a little turbulence and gusty winds. Now these conditions can both cause yaw through weather vaning. Let's say the airplane's nose yaws left. Well, this will end up creating a roll to the left. The reason is because while the yaw is occurring, the left wing will retreat compared to the right wing. The airspeed change between the two wings causes a difference in lift, and the airplane will then roll in the direction that it yawed, even though the pilot never touched the ailerons. So what happens next is this. The pilot doesn't identify the yaw because they aren't looking for it. They tend to put the priority on roll. If an aircraft yaws and then rolls, many pilots will first recognize the roll and correct the bank with aileron. They often fail to see the yaw, and they're either late to make rudder input or they don't make it at all. And this ends up in uncoordinated flight or deviation from the desired flight path. Hey. Do this often enough, and you're looking at a lot of lost efficiency and a flight track that's uh, somewhat less than straight. The remedy, of course, is to use the rudder to correct yaw before the roll can happen. In essence, staying active with small prompt rudder inputs. But what if you have trouble recognizing yaw? For newer pilots especially, knowing what uncoordinated flight feels like is not always an intuitive thing. Developing a feel for the forces acting on the airplane and on you as the pilot can take time. You can feel these forces through pressures into or out of the seat, or a shifting force from side to side as the airplane slips or skids. This may well be where the phrase flying by the seat of your pants comes from. Basically, if the airplane is yawed, even slightly, you should get the sense that something just doesn't quite feel right. You'll probably feel like you're being pushed Ow. sideways toward the outside or inside of an uncoordinated hey. turn, and you might realize you're leaning slightly to compensate. If you need some practice, consider going up with the CFI and have them occasionally put in some slight yaw without telling you. See if you notice. You can also practice a maneuver that will sharpen your rudder skills. Using only the ailerons and no rudder, roll the wings left and right in a back and forth rhythm and try holding the nose on a fixed point. It's not possible. You'll see the nose constantly swinging in the opposite direction of the bank, which is adverse yaw. Not to mention, it'll just feel kind of weird. Now, if you try it again, but you bring your feet into the maneuver this time, you'll find that precise rudder control will hold that fixed point. The movement of the airplane will feel more natural, too. All of this might not sound like a big deal, but there are safety implications here. Coordinated flight is important in keeping control of the airplane. If you're uncoordinated and conditions are right, you could find yourself in a configuration that makes a stall rapidly develop into a spin. And this can be really dangerous, especially when flying at low altitudes like the traffic pattern or during slow flight or stall training. In a typical stall and spin accident, misuse of the rudder is often partly to blame. So whether you're not recognizing y'all or simply just need a little bit of rudder practice, follow these tips and give the rudder the respect it deserves.